this video, we're gonna talk about the controls page. On the controls page, there's various widgets to help you manually control your farm bot for performing a demo for your friends or uh, when you wanna go outside at night to harvest some crops and you just wanna turn the lights on really quick. And this is also useful for monitoring your farm bot, either its position or you can use a webcam and some of the other features on here. So let's dive in to the various widgets on the controls page and see what they're all about. So in the top left here, you'll see the move widget and this allows you to move your farm bot manually with either relative movements or absolute movements. So to do a relative movement, you'll first want to choose a move amount in millimeters in the top of the widget here. The default value is 100 millimeters, though you can go shorter movements or longer movements. And then when you'd like to tell your farm bot to move that distance, you can click one of the arrow buttons to move in the positive or negative X, Y, or Z directions. So let's give this a go. I have the move amount set to 100, and I'm gonna click this arrow here to move my farm bot in the positive Y direction, that 100 millimeters. So we'll click this. Notice that when the farm bot is currently moving, the arrow buttons become grayed out and are disabled so that you can't tell the farm bot to move again when it's already doing a move command. You'll also see in the status ticker when farm bot is moving that it has sent a yellow busy log and then when it, the movement is complete, it sends a green success log. Right below the arrow buttons, you'll see three grayed out input fields and these input fields tell you where FarmBot currently is located for the X, Y, and Z axes. You'll also notice next to the arrow buttons, there is a home button and a camera button that allows you to take photos or tell FarmBot to find home or go to the home position. Down below, you'll see three input fields for the X, Y, and Z axes. And this is how you can instruct FarmBot to do an absolute movement using this widget. So you simply enter the coordinates that you want FarmBot to go to, press the go button, and then it will go there. So let's just type in 000 to send FarmBot back to home, and we'll press go, and there it goes. There's also a gear icon, which opens up a menu with additional options. If you find that when you press an arrow button, your farm bot appears to move in the opposite direction that you expected it to move, you can invert the jog buttons using these toggles so that when you press the left arrow, uh, for example, the farm bot will move to the left according to your perspective when you're looking at the device. There's also a few other toggle switches here which you can read more about what they do in the documentation. And that is the move widget. Below the move widget, is the peripherals widget. Based on your FarmBot version, we've already added all of the stock peripherals included with your kit, such as the vacuum pump, the lighting, and the solenoid valve. If you'd like to change these, you can press the edit button and change the name, or if you've connected them to somewhere else on your electronics board, for example, if you're doing a custom FarmBot build, then you can specify what pin they're connected to in the microcontroller. You can also use these minus buttons to delete peripherals and the plus button to add more. The peripherals can be operated using these toggle switches. Again, for example, if you're going out to your garden at night and you just wanna quickly turn on the lights, you can use this toggle here to turn the lights on and you can also use it to turn the lights off. And when the FarmBot is offline, these toggle switches will also become grayed out because they will be inaccessible for you to use. In the top right of the screen, we have the webcam feeds widget. This allows you to add a video stream of your farm bot in case you have a security camera or for example, a Nest home camera setup pointed at your farm bot. You can press the edit button and add the feed name and the URL here. And then when you press save, you'll be able to view your farm bot from that security camera. If you don't plan on using an external webcam feed to view your farm bot here, you can go to the account settings page and there's an option to remove the webcam widget so that it doesn't take up so much screen space if you're not gonna use it. Below the webcam feeds widget, there's a widget for your sensors. 
Based on your FarmBot version, we've already added the sensors included with your kit, though you can also press the edit button to rename them, add new ones, delete these ones, or mess with the settings. Depending on if the sensor is an analog sensor or a digital sensor, will determine how the sensor is rendered here. If you press the read sensor button, it will instruct FarmBot to take a reading. You can see that after pressing the tool verification sensor, we see that the one indicates that a, a tool is currently mounted to the FarmBot's tool mount. And if I press the read soil moisture sensor here, we will get a reading, though if the tool is not currently connected, then that reading might be a false reading. So you need to make sure uh, that you know what's happening with your FarmBot in order to trust these readings sometimes. Then below the sensors widget is the sensor history widget, which allows you to visualize a graph of all of your sensor readings from a specific sensor over a specific time period and also filtered by location that the sensor reading was taken at. So you can use the various options here and also read the documentation to learn more about how to use the various filtering options to view just the data that you want. And below the graph, there is also a table of all of the raw sensor readings that you have currently filtered to view in case you want to see individual values and the time that they are taking at, etc. So that is the controls page. Again, there's a lot of functions on here that we didn't go over, but you can read about them in the documentation and see some specific examples of how to use those features. All right, talk to you in the next one.